One of the most important sections of any audio editing software is its transport. The transport can be found up here on the command bar. If you haven't moved your transport around, it's probably still somewhere up here. As you can see, by clicking on its leading edge, we can move it around. In fact, if you're one of those people that prefers a floating transport, you can do that too. Just right click on it and select floatable. Dialog will pop up, letting us know that we can move it anywhere. Sure enough, when we drag it around, it stays wherever we put it. I'm going to put it back up here. First, I need to right click on it to turn off its floatability, which isn't even a word, and then move it back to the spot I like. Perfecto. There's also an entire menu dedicated to the transport up here. It's just mirroring all the buttons here, but it's nice because we can see full descriptions of each button and even check out some handy key commands. Let's start with the controls that everybody's seen before. If you've used a VCR, DVD player, or maybe you've still got a Walkman hanging around somewhere, you pretty much know what play, stop, and record do. We're going to really check out the record button in the next chapter. Just as a side note as we're going through this, make sure to check out the transport menu and start memorizing the key commands over on the right hand side here. Trust me, you're not going to want to have to click these buttons every time you want to play or pause an audio file. To the left of play, stop, and record are four buttons allowing us to move the cursor, which is this blinking line, back and forth. The buttons on each end allow us to quickly move between the start and end of the file. The buttons in the middle are rewind and fast forward, and they let us move the cursor back and forth in increments. Notice that at the moment, whenever we hit play, it starts from the cursor location. We can change that using this first button here. Clicking on it reveals a bunch of different playback options. We can set it to always play from the start of the file, from the start of a selection, and a bunch of other things. We'll talk about selecting audio and creating markers in other chapters, just keep in mind that they can be used as playback starting points. Next, we have some skip options. This allows us to skip directly over a section of the audio. Let's try it out. Move the cursor down to the audio file and click and drag to make a selection. Now in the skip settings, choose skip selection. When we play back the file, it skips right over our selection. Pretty cool, huh? The next button allows us to control the playback speed. This is a really cool feature because it allows us to speed up or slow down playback without the pitch being affected. Right now, it's set to normal speed. All of these untitled listed here are spots where we can have our own speed presets. Let's start by setting one up to playback at half speed. Select the first untitled option, and then select Edit Speed. Let's rename it Half Speed. Set the speed factor to 50%. The field next to it shows us how much the audio is being time-stretched in order to accomplish it. You're definitely going to want to make sure Keep Constant Pitch is checked, unless you really want it to sound like it's being played through Darth Vader's mask, that is. We can set the quality of the time-stretching using the drop-down here. I find that standard quality sounds great, but if you have a really killer CPU, feel free to bump it up to high or even best if you have a quad-core i7 or something awesome like that. We can accelerate the process by getting it to ignore sections of audio below a certain volume level, but unless you have a really old computer, I don't think that's necessary. Finally, we can make it bypass the master section and audio meters while playing back at this speed, which is probably a good idea. It really helps your CPU out, and you probably don't really need them activated anyway. Most of the time, I'm slowing down the audio to make it easier to transcribe an interview or something along those lines, so mastering and meters don't really matter. Hit OK and start playback. Sounds good, doesn't it? Let's set it back to normal speed. Next, we have our stop and loop settings. 
we can set playback to automatically stop at any of these four locations. We can also set the cursor to move back to the start any time a stop occurs. Above that are our loop settings. We can enable and disable loops using this button. Let's create a selection and then choose the loop selected time range option. Start playback. If we go back to the stop loop settings, we can decide how many times WaveLab will play the loop. Right now it's set to forever, but it can also be set to 2, 3, 4, or 5 times. The last button here is the Jog Shuttle button. When it's enabled, you'll notice a pink bar appears along with this thick black cursor. Click on the pink bar and move back and forth. This allows us to jog around the audio. The black cursor represents the spot that's being played back. Clicking on the audio file itself allows us to shuffle. The closer you are to the cursor, the slower it'll go. I hope you've enjoyed this video.